So I wanted to quickly talk about some of the things, the newer features, the newer things that are going on with Spout and Blender. So I have Blender open here. This is a model that I had created for some pyramids that I had on the wall. So I matched them one to one on the wall. Um, and what I could do is I could actually move some of the nodes so that they align properly on the wall, the projection that's happening. Um, however, I wanted a way to control lighting in a kind of a pseudo fake way to give them this three dimensionality, um, but also be able to like change the, the drama and the content um, within what I see on the wall versus what I see in real life. Uh, so what I've done is here is I made this this simple model of uh, the pyramids and then some some basically just some some lights. Um, I can move them around, of course. You know, I have this option to um, G and Z, right, to zoom in and out. Um, you know, G and Y to move up and down, and G and X to move them left to right, right. I also have three different types of lights. I can change the color so that I can add a bit of drama, right. Um, but there's there's all kinds of different ways that you can use this in Blender. Um, so I found at first th th this all came about because I have these geometric designs on the wall. I want to give them fake lighting. Uh, and I thought, you know, Blender would be the perfect, you know, way of doing that. Uh, I had some issues doing that. And then I found the spout um, output for cameras within Blender. Uh, so if you go uh, to spout.com or spout.zeal, excuse me, um, there is a plugin for Blender. You just load it into your system. You download the file. Um, you add in the dependency into add-ons, right? Um, all you need to do is just, um, let's just go here, enable. And you'll notice that in here somewhere I have my spout output. Um, it comes up as something, it's in here. I'm just not seeing it. I'm blind. Uh, texture sharing, that's the reason why. It comes in as texture sharing. Uh, instead of uh, the spout output right here, it says NDI and spout. Um, you um, you know add it in, and then once it's added in, uh, then what you can do is you can um, spout output your Blender files. Now, uh, there are some issues. This is kind of like they're still working on the generation. They're still working on the, the files. It's like one of the alpha or beta uh, versions of the file. Um, and it does some really amazing stuff. So this is it down here, um, the spout texture. texture. It's set to camera. Uh, and then uh, the spout texture, I have uh, spout siphon. I changed the, uh, the name of how it shows up in Resolume as Blender 3D. And then I uh, set the apply color management so that it color manages uh, the file for uh, the spout output and then flip outgoing texture so that um, you, what you see here is what you're going to see in the program. Uh, if you don't select the flip outgoing texture, it'll just be in reverse. Um, so everything that's on the right hand side will be on the left hand side and so on and so forth. Um, you'll also notice down here at the bottom, it says shading, scene, and layer. Right at this moment, it's set to this window here. I've turned off all of my extras on the um, inside of the, you know, the, the panels here. I've turned off the, uh, the lighting, uh, the grid, uh, the, whole, the whole shebang. So that all you see is just this here is what's being pushed to Blender. You can actually set up just a blank window with nothing on it and then have that as your output um, so as like a second secondary window and then you could be working in Blender at the same time. So the reason why this is also cool is because it's all happening in real time. Um, you know, the, the drawbacks to this is that you have to have a powerful machine in order to make this happen. I'm going to go to shading because that's usually where I typically make my changes. Um, however, it works pretty good. So let's, uh, I'm going to shrink this over and just move this over here to the left hand side so you can see the right hand side. Uh, the right hand side is uh, Spout, as you can see. Uh, and I actually, or not Spout, Resolume, as you can see. And I have Resolume working inside of um, bl a Blender, working inside of a Resolume. And then I also have Synesthesia here inside of Resolume as well. 
So the issues with this is that your computer is going to be really taxed, the, all of this stuff is happening on one machine, so sometimes that causes some issues. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Synesthesia here up to the next screen, just so that we have more real estate to play with and I can give you an idea as to how this all works together. So right at this moment in, Res in Resolume, I have Synesthesia at the top left hand side, right? And then I have Blender 3D at the bottom and uh, they're working in, in, uh, together to basically create this scene. So uh, I have this overlay over the top of the uh, scene and then uh, I have my Blender 3D scene at the very bottom. So I'm gonna move those all the way up to the top. And that's basically what's going on in order to make this scene work. Uh, so the disadvantages, let's talk about the disadvantages real quick. Uh, if I move this over to the right hand side, uh, when I move things, you'll notice or change colors or whatnot, sometimes there'll be an issue where it will skip. And the reason being is because you're processing all, you're processing all the blender, the uh, synesthesia and Resolume all in the same computer. And so that causes problems. So what I've done to kind of combat that is I've actually dumbed down this scene. If you, I don't know if you noticed that I'd gone through this pretty quickly, you may have noticed uh, that my capture width and my capture height are not, are not 1920 by 1080, they're 1280 by 720. Uh, and that's to basically, um, that is the sweet spot for my computer to basically change the, um, the amount of RAM that's being used. Uh, so much so that you don't notice the uh, the changes so that I have a real-time render happening rendering happening in blender and it's not overall affecting Resolume or synesthesia too much that you'll really notice it on the wall um, the, the other thing that I have to kind of you know talk about in this kind of case is that this is kind of one of those moments where the man on the fast horse won't know the difference uh, meaning that uh, as you're moving through all of this and you have your synesthesia running you have all your effects running in Resolume uh, it, you're not going to notice that hey there's a pixel there that I can see within Blender uh, because it's all being meshed and merged together, uh, a lot of the stuff that's happening in Blender is really there for just lighting effects. It's not going to, you know, the quality is, is you know, for 1920 by 1080, you may not notice on a larger scale, you probably would. But if you have a larger scale, you're not worried about processing power. In my particular case, because, um, you know, just a, a quick heads up. Uh, I have a i5 8th generation um, processor, Intel i5. Uh, I have um, 32 gigs of RAM and I have a 3070. Um, so it kind of, I would consider myself probably middle of the road. Um, there are plenty of people out there that have much more powerful machines than I do. Uh, and can do all these things without even batting an eyelash. Um, so, but in any case, um, if I hit G and Y, I can move the lighting, you know what I'm saying? So, and you can see that in real time over here. So let's, let's kind of, um, let's expand this a little bit so you can see a little bit more about what's going on. Um, so that's, that's a little better. So I could scroll this over here. Okay, so, uh, well, in any case, um, sorry, this is kind of, I'm trying to be quick about this. I don't want this to be too long. Um, you know, it's a, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of give you a quick overview of how this works to kind of get your, pique your interest. And if you have questions, um, I'll, I'll leave my uh, information at the bottom of this uh, tutorial. Uh, so for instance, I have this, uh, this red lighting right here, for instance, and I can change this to blue, right? And I've already changed the mood of the scene, right? Um, so you could also set all of this to uh, to do this on the fly. You could have it so that um, you're cycling through the colors by basically um, adding in a uh, MIDI controller. You can you can actually control Blender through MIDI controls. Um, there's a um, there's an add-on for that as well. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for that. I don't have it set up right at this moment, um, but I have used it in the past and it works really really well. So in any case, if I hit G and Z and I scale this up, you notice that I've kind of really changed the, the look and feel of this, um, this piece, right? And that was the, the purpose behind this, is I wanted a quick and easy way to kind of um, control where things are hitting 
in the right hand uh, in the resolume, right? So it's it's just a it's a really uh, interesting real time effect. Um, I really like how this works. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, complaints, concerns, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll try my hardest to address any kind of uh, any kind of questions you may have. Um, I hope you enjoy this a little short term or short uh, form, um, you know, video. Uh, thank you very much for your interest, and I hope you have a great day.